All right, welcome back. This time I want to talk a little bit about tax rates, specifically income tax rates, and how we respond to a change in income tax rates in terms of labor supply. The good thing is that we can translate a change in the income tax rate to essentially a change in the wage rate, and then we can work through the income effect and the substitution effect in the same way. Let me give an example. I've already drawn here a budget constraint based on our current wage. Right? So if you just have a simple hourly wage, and right, if I don't work it off, I consume 24 hours of leisure, I'm here on the uh, horizontal intercept with 24 hours of leisure and no income, and then every hour of leisure I give up is an hour of work, and I increase my income up to this point. What happens if the income tax rate goes up? Well, the income tax rate goes up. My effective take-home pay, right, my effective wage has gone down. Right? If I earn $10 an hour, and now we, we impose an income tax of 20%, um, then out of my $10, I pay $2 in taxes, so my take-home wage is effectively lower. So I could think about this as a decrease in the wage. A decrease in the wage changes the slope of the line, and it sh rotates downward. So an increase, let's put it over here, Increase in the tax rate is like a decrease in your effective wage. And that basically rotates the budget constraint downward. Let me get another color here. If you were to have a decrease in the tax rate, if your income tax rate from, went from 20% down to 10%, then effectively you get to take home more money uh, from each paycheck. Right, so if I got paid $10 an hour and I used to get to keep eight because I had a tax rate of 20%, if my tax rate goes down to 10, I only pay a dollar in taxes, I have nine left over, my effective wage is higher, and my budget constraint rotates upward. So a decrease in the tax rate is basically equal to an increase in my effective wage. And as long as you can remember that part, you can work through the income and the substitution effects the same way. If my tax rate goes down, we already said that's effectively like an increase in my wage. If my wage goes up, the substitution effect says, hey, uh, opportunity cost of leisure is now higher. Um, if the cost of leisure is higher, I would consume less leisure, that is, I would work more. The income effect of a decrease in the tax rate says, if my effective wage rate has gone up, I'm, I'm basically richer. So I want to consume more leisure, which means I work less. So if you can logically think through changes in the wage rate, then all you have to do in cases of a, of a change in the tax rate is back up a step and think, how does the change in the tax rate affect my wage rate? Let's look at an increase in the tax rate. An increase in the tax rate effectively decreases my take-home wage. So what's the substitution effect say? Well, if the, my wage rate has gone down effectively, then the opportunity cost of leisure has gone down. So the substitution effect says I'd consume more leisure. If I'm consuming more leisure, that means I'm working less. On the other hand, the income effect says if my effective wage has gone down, I'm poorer. Right? I basically can afford less of all these good things, including leisure, so I would consume less leisure, and that means I would be working more. So in both cases, the income and the substitution effect are, are pushing in opposite directions. Uh, one of them may prevail over the other, and you'd see that by actually drawing in the indifference curves and seeing if the consumption of leisure and the time spent working goes up or down. Depends on the individual preferences of the individual. I want to tie this together with one other concept that you may uh, remember uh, from micro principles. Um, if you've taken intermediate, you uh, surely saw it there as well, and that's the Laffer curve. Um, during the 1980s in supply side economics, uh, Art Laffer um, became well known for this, uh, this relationship between tax revenue and the tax rate. 
if you were to graph it this way and put tax rate down here and then measure the tax revenue collected on this axis, this is the relationship that you get. If I have an income tax rate of zero and I increase that to 1%, right, so I'm going to increase my tax rate moving this direction, what happens to my tax revenue? Well, it probably goes up. Right? If I, I didn't use the tax income at all, I now tax it at 1%, I collect tax revenue. And if I increase that to 2%, what happens to my tax revenue collected? Well, I'd expect it to go up even more. And if at 3% and 4% and I keep increasing the tax rate, I expect my tax revenue to increase. And as I keep increasing the tax rate, I expect my tax revenue to go up even more to a point. Does that happen all the way up to, say, a tax rate of 100%? Well, there's a trade-off, right? Eventually, you start taxing people so heavily that what happens to the incentive to work? Well, it's going, it starts to go down. And people might say, I could work more, but I pay so much of it in taxes that the incentive to work is, is, is decreased to the point that I just work less. And so if I, my tax rate gets so high that I destroy my tax base, which is what we call at this point, right, the actual income earned that you're applying the tax to, then it's possible that at some point you level out and your tax revenue starts to go down. And if your tax rate is 70% or 80% or 90% or 95%, which we have seen, you know, historically we've seen tax rates that high at some points in history in the United States, it's possible that we're actually collecting less revenue uh, than we could by decreasing the tax rate. I'm not trying to suggest where we are on this curve now. Um, and this curve should not necessarily be interpreted to say this is the optimal tax rate because it uh, maximizes revenue. All it's trying to show is that there might be some relationship between the tax rate and the revenue raised. Well, why did I bring this up here? I want to try to tie that back to the income and substitution effect uh, of a change in the, in the tax rate. Here's what we know. Over in this range, you have two things going on. As you increase the tax rate, you may be discouraging work effort on some margin, but you're also increasing the rate on right, the remaining income that's earned, and so this keeps going up. So the effect, the, um, the size of the substitution effect, which is as, the, as leisure becomes effectively cheaper and cheaper, people will consume more of it and work less, right, because the Steadily increasing tax rates decreases your take-home pay uh, to such a point that leisure becomes very cheap, right? Because working is the opportunity cost of leisure. All we can say with certainty is that in this downward sloping portion, the substitution effect is greater than the income effect, right? That because remember the income effect would say I'm effectively poor, I want to work more. The substitution effect says. The opportunity cost of leisure is, is really low, so I'm going to consume more leisure and work less. If you are on this part of the, the Laffer curve, where you increase the tax rate further and you see your revenue go down, you know from a labor supply perspective that you're at a point where the substitution effect of the tax increase is greater than the income effect.